In this video, I'm gonna show you 12 signs of autism for kids under two years old. And for each sign, we'll be comparing severe, mild, and no autism. Oh, good job. Are you such a good big sister? No. <laughs> We're gonna debunk some myths about autism today. My husband and I have five kids, two are on the spectrum. Ezra, right here, is a level three autism, which just means he needs more support. He's nonverbal and uses an iPad to communicate. Here's Simon. He's level one autism, which means he needs a little less support. He's learning how to talk and he has a strong will to be independent. And we have three more kids, Mark, Benson, and Marie, who aren't autistic. And here's 12 signs of autism. We'll compare severe autism, mild autism, and no autism with each one of these signs. If you want a diagnosis, please see a professional. But we do hope that by sharing our family videos online, we can really help educate people and help spread awareness for autism. Sign number one, stimming. With our mildly autistic son, Simon, he rarely stimmed when he was young. Every once in a while, when he got really excited, he would do something like this with his hands. Simon also runs across the room every night from one side to the other. When we lived in an RV, he would do this in the RV every single night. Ezra will stim too, usually by manipulating cords or whatever it is that he has in his hand. You can see that here. See how he wraps the cords around his hand? That's a stim that he loves to do. Another stim that Ezra did when he was little was the head shake. You can see it here. What you doing, Ezra? Huh? Do you you like shake your head? Yeah. Remember, if you have a child who's autistic, you're in good company. Good boy, Ezra, you can do it. You can do it. Sign number two, needing to learn to point. We saw this right off the bat that Simon learned how to point after about a week of us teaching him how. Ezra, on the other hand, took a long time and he would really only point when he was extremely motivated, like with his birthday cake. Ezra, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Will you point at it? <gasps> See that? This is extremely rare for this kid. Good boy! Yeah. You pointed at it! So the point here is that even though Simon learned to point quickly and Ezra eventually learned to point when he was motivated, they still had to learn how to point. Usually, a neurotypical kid will automatically learn after seeing someone else point. The third sign is eating things that aren't food. So I just want to show you what he ate today. Ezra! What'd you eat? What'd you do? It was a marker. He usually eats crayons. When Ezra was little, he would put everything in his mouth and usually eat crayons and suck on markers, as you can see in this video. Simon, we've never had a problem with eating things that aren't food, though Simon does love smelling things, like people's hair when he first meets them. Sometimes neurotypical kids will do this, but the main difference is here is how often they do it. We literally had to ban crayons from the house because somehow Ezra would find them and then eat them. Sign number four, not understanding cause and effect. When Ezra was barely two years old, we were working with him for months to get him to understand this cause and effect toy. It took about three months for him to figure it out and here's a moment when he finally did it himself. He pushed, push, push. Turn. Simon, on the other hand, once we taught him a few times, he would learn. But understanding it by himself was really tricky. A lot of times, a neurotypical kid will just figure it out themselves. Sign number five, using something as a chew toy, like all the time, I mean constantly in their mouth. I could tell that with Ezra, it would really soothe him if he chewed on something. So shortly after this, we took away the bottle, but we replaced it with something else he could chew. A lot of neurotypical kids will like their pacifier, but this is something that usually they grow out of. Ezra, on the other hand, still will manipulate things and put them in his mouth and chew them. Even at seven years old, Ezra loves chewing on things. And we have specific chew toys for him so that he can do that safely. So believe it or not, we used to live in an RV. Yes, all seven of us. And we visited all the national parks. Ezra and Simon loved the outdoors. And when we traveled to the national parks, we always included them. We post every day of our unique normal. Please consider subscribing. Sign six is needing help with simple milestones. For example, kicking a ball, throwing a ball, or going down a slide. 
It took Ezra three months to learn how to go down this slide. A neurotypical kid will just usually see another kid go down the slide and understand instantly how it's done and want to do it himself. When Simon was younger, he needed some instruction on how to go down the slide, but he was able to figure it out just after a couple tries. Sign number seven, likes tight spaces. A lot of times autistic people will like tight spaces. Before we got the safety bed for Ezra, he used to sleep every night in between the wall and his mattress. Simon likes tight spaces too, but he won't stay in it as long as Ezra does. Ezra will stay hours in a swing like this. Sign number eight, collect obsessively. I would find Ezra asleep with the most random treasures in his hands, like wrappers, cars, stuffed animals, things that he carried around all day. Even now, he'll choose different items on different days that he'll obsess with. Sometimes it's a lot of cords. You can see here him putting his cords in his shoes, hiding it from other people. And Simon will spend long hours on specific things he likes, but he doesn't have to hold all of them all the time like Ezra does. A neurotypical kid will usually have a variety of toys and things that they like to do. Sign number nine, the side eye. We don't have good video of this, but you gotta love this picture. This picture is of Ezra. Because he's overstimulated visually, it's really uncomfortable for Ezra to look people right in the eye. Because of this, we don't ever expect him to look people in the eye. Simon, on the other hand, has learned to look people in the eye, and he's been able to learn how to have good eye contact. Usually, a neurotypical kid will have good eye contact. Sign number 10, not looking at the camera. When Simon was two years old, he learned how to say cheese for the camera. It didn't come naturally, but he learned how to do it, and he learned pretty quick. Ezra, on the other hand, he still hates looking at the camera. Now, if your child doesn't look at the camera one time, that doesn't mean they're autistic. We're talking about consistency here. Maybe look through your family photos, and if you can't find one picture where your child's looking at the camera, well then, that's a sign of autism. I mean, look at all these pictures. Sign number 11, sensory seeking. Ezra likes ball pits but he doesn't play in it like a typical kid. A neurotypical kid will usually play in a ball pit by standing up, jumping, throwing the balls around, and using it like an activity. What Ezra does is he goes inside and then he just stays there for a long time. For Simon, his sensory seeking is a little more subtle. He likes mommy's hair. You can see he likes the feeling of the hair on his face. Sign number 12 is to communicate choices. You can see right here, I give Ezra a choice on what shoes to wear. Simon comes in and he's able to make the choice and point at what he wants. In this instance, Ezra may not have cared what shoes he wore, or maybe he was trying to point to the shoes with his feet, but I didn't notice at the time. Point Ezra, what do you want? Ezra. What do you think he should have? Ezra. Usually, a neurotypical kid will have no problem understanding that you want him to make a choice. For Simon, it's a lot easier for him to learn the expectation. It may not come naturally, but he's able to point what shoes he wants Ezra to wear. Please put in the comments what you think about our list. Let us know if you agree or disagree. And here's a video where we share five signs of autism in babies.